So I'm going to start with um, the main kind of um, thrust of today's talk, which is a home and nimble spaces, which has been an ongoing project looking at housing for the last four years. And a really kind of important conceptual and inspirational um, idea for the project came from this very, very impressive long-term project from Holland called Social Housing, Housing the Social, Art, Property and Spatial Justice. And it was developed by two curators, Andre Phillips and Folia Ardempshi, through SCORE, which was a public arts um, organisation in Holland. And this book and, and programme and, and seminar came out in 2010. And I think it's really important because it was that time when Europe was being really, really throttled by neoliberalism. And I think art and housing were two spaces and, and spaces for thought and being that were really being decimated. And in Holland, the kind of decimation came very, very s strongly and quickly. And for instance, SCORE, huge, really, really important organisation was wiped out in one budget and they no longer exist. And um, we thought it was really the idea of housing the social, I thought was a really kind of important concept. And I think social housing has been a concept De, de, uh, develop through through the welfare state and, and and very very impressive projects came into being especially in in Europe and then suddenly you know what what does what does the social where is the place for the social in housing in a kind of neoliberal um, landscape and that was that was a really kind of core idea that we have taken through the Nimble Spaces project. The other really important concepts that have been very um, present in Nimble Spaces, the idea of community and privacy. So <clears throat> we're constantly looking at that kind of duality or that relationship between the personal and, and the more public and what does how can those, those, that relationship between community and privacy be developed in what we're developing, which is this kind of idea of supportive housing, housing for people with support needs, where, where people's rights and their dignity and their privacy and their, their need for relationships and personal spaces is probably more pertinent and important than, than for many others. And yet the, the need for community, interconnectedness, interdependence, relationships um, is really, really important as well. So I think that the idea of social, housing the social and this duality between community and privacy has, been, has, has driven nimble spaces. And the idea of interdependence and cohabitation the Nimble Spaces project has, has come out of um, Camp Hill, which is a community that for the last 60 years across Europe and, it's, it's, and, and further has been a place where people with and without disabilities have lived, worked and learned together. And it's, quite, it's a very, very inspirational um, model that has developed huge amount of um, a huge amount of knowledge I suppose in Ireland there's 18 Campbell communities some communities would have the most um, advanced biomass heating systems um, phenomenal kind of innovation has happened within Camp Hill and Patrick Lydon who's the man on the um, right hand corner he's American and has Developed, been living in Ireland for the last 40 years, has developed a number of the Camp Hills in the Kilkenny area, but also KCAP, which is an art school in the town of Callan, and has been the real inspiration and um, instigator of work that we have been doing in Callan, and um, the sort of the, the charismatic agent behind Nimble Spaces. And Camp Hill has 
have be, um, on a kind of um, economic sense been, had a completely different model to any other service provider where everybody who works in Camp Hill um, had their needs met, so had housing, food, education all provided. And now Camp Hill, work, people working in Camp Hill, it's moving towards an employment model. So there's a really big shift in this innovative model within Camp Hill. There's also, from a kind of a national policy level, there's a real push for people with a disability to live independently in community. And that's kind of um, coming down from the UN Conventions of Human Rights, people with disability having full housing rights and um, full independence. And I, um, Nimble Spaces has been a way for us to think through those, those words, words like independence, community, and really interrogate them and think about what they mean for p individual people. People like Nikki, who's on the right-hand bottom corner, who needs a huge amount of support. He also doesn't have um, a huge family support around him beyond Camp Hill. And um, what does living independently in the community mean for somebody like Nikki, who would need 24-hour care? And um, we really wanted to develop a process that people like Nikki and his friends could go through a again, go through a number of of um, creative and experimental workshops, collaborations to really devise what they how they can imagine living independently in the community, what what that would look and feel like. And so it's been a really, um, it's been a, an amazing opportunity that we got Arts Council funding and were able to undergo this quite extraordinary journey with um, a number of, of adults in, in Callan and Camp Hill. So to, um, to, yes, in 2013, we were able to commission choreographer Renock Neal, visual artist Rona Byrne, architect Studio Wee from London and Lid, who are based between um, Berlin and Belfast, to develop um, participatory workshops that allow people with support needs, with communication needs, people with kind of really ver varying levels of mobility and also c communication um, possibilities to investigate really what home meant to them. And that was, I think, a very eye-opening um, process for the artists, for the architects, but also for the participants and for, for the people who, who, support, um, who support the participants too. And one of the most um, kind of illuminating parts of that process was a game that Lid Architects developed called the Enabling Space Game. And that was an opportunity for um, individuals to imagine their, their spatial needs and how it wasn't about, yeah, it wasn't really even thinking about what kind of home they wanted, but really what sort of relationships and spaces that they needed um, around them. And the game has developed from from its kind of early stages in, in probably 2013, now to a situation where people have used the game and the game has modified and developed and become quite complex. And we're gonna be building um, homes based really on those kind of, those ideas of relationships that emerged out of, out of the game. Um, so it was very much about devising and developing what your needs are in terms of privacy and shared. So it's kind of, it's the really, really great thing about the enabling space game is it's, it works for a couple, it works for a family, it works for, it could work for a town. It's, it's kind of got these really, um, it, yeah, kind of very multi-purpose in terms of how it can engage with um, 
different scales. So we're, um, this is the town of Callan, which is um, a small rural town, a market town, surrounded by kind of farming countryside. And um, Camp Hill operate two sort of gardens at the workhouse and up at Westcourt, so they sort of own those two plots of land. And also at Moat Lane, a little um, area there, there's, they have a community house and also some already supported living. There are three sites that have really complex um, conservation, archaeological um, kind of footprints. And there are the spaces that we've kind of identified as opportunities to, for, to develop housing. And um, um, what we're looking at is creating small pocket neighbourhoods that would enable people with support needs to live alongside neighbours and for the neighbours to have quite um, strong ideas around, um, about, around what it is to be a neighbour and whether that's to somebody with, who's older, who um, has, has a disability, has a mental health issue, that there is this kind of sense of really um, being, yeah, being a very conscious neighbour. And it's in terms of, you know, we're, we're really looking at, at developing a language or a way of thinking that those really interrogates those ideas of independence and community. Because for, for a lot of people, living independently in the wider community doesn't bring that sense of, of um, security and um, shared space and um, yeah, neighbourliness. So Camp Hill is going to be developing 16 social housing units across those three sites. And in conjunction, we're developing a housing co-op where eight um, houses are going to be developed through the housing co-op. So it's so a total of 24 houses. And the um, social housing has been de developed through the CAS funded, which is a capital assistance scheme, which is the government funding for, for social housing that really only came properly back on stream last year. But the year before, it was more for um, people experiencing homelessness. And this year, in 2016, it's actually got a, a pretty um, focused... Um, yeah, it's focusing on people with a disability moving into the community. And the, eight ha the, the housing co-op is still very much in development. I'd love, maybe, because it'd be an interesting conversation just after I could talk you through a little bit our journey in terms of developing the housing co-op because obviously in an Irish context it's a very new thing um, and there are a number of really exciting projects happening across the country the homegrown house and um, a group in Clock Jordan a number in Dublin and Waterford but it is still in terms of from a legal and a financial perspective, hugely um, complicated and exciting, but also also quite challenging. And I'll just go through the, um, I mean, one of the kind of exciting things as well about the, the whole kind of design process is that we're really looking at how these, dere I mean, the, the workhouse in Westcourt being kind of derelict, um, derelict sites of archaeology, archaeological um, importance how the neighborhoods can really knit back into the kind of existing fabric of the town and they're also um, yes kind of small enough that they won't feel as something separate but we're really making sure that they 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 fit back into the town so the workhouse um, site here it's also where um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit later about the workhouse site because it's a very interesting space to to be developing. Um, this is a, the orchard where there will be six houses. The West Court with the beautiful wall garden. The new housing is going to be between the wall garden and that mound. There's an industrial estate at the other side, so it's it's quite a, a real strange. Um, 
interface between rural and, and industrial estate. And in Moat Lane, the housing is just going to be on the same green field side here. There's four houses. So I might, um, after my talk, we might, if you have some questions just about the kind of um, how we've gone about setting up the co-op or how it's going to mix in with the social housing. Um, I'd love to talk a little bit more, but I'm going to go on and give you a sense of our wider working Callan, and you can maybe see how <coughs> some of the, yeah, just the way we work in the town has informed um, the wider Nimble Spaces project as well. So this is the east wing of the workhouse, and um, I'm going to let's move the talk on into the realm of a building and um, for the last three years myself and Holly and Orla and others have been looking at how we can how we can re-inhabit um, the workhouse and it's been I think in terms of um, we found that that site and that space is so important to, to be kind of very conscious of and in terms you know looking at what's happening to the welfare state the fact that the workhouses were the the first manifestation of the welfare state in the early 1800s the first time that the um english administration they like put in place a, some sort of um safety net for people who are experiencing poverty um obviously it was presented in an incredibly cruel and authoritarian um, manifestation. And it's really interesting to think about how so much of that language has re-emerged in the 21st century, the idea of the deserving and undeserving poor, how the um, direct provision has so, much, has so many kind of um, similarities with, with the workhouses, the idea of of a sense of enclosure, of um, of this kind of feeling of um, imprisonment. So the yeah, the site has been. I mean, we we feel that as a, as a space and a place and habit, it's it's constantly um, even just in its its very architecture, it's very. Um, its physicality is continuously, continuously kind of um, problematic, and but also enlightening. It's 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 been a really very rich and troubling um, space to to work in. It, in terms of a workhouse, it's had a very interest. The workhouse in Callan has had a very interesting history because it was has never been turned into a community. Uh, community hospital or a psychiatric hospital or and a, a kind of a it's never come under massive administration from from the government a lot of after 1921 a lot of workhouses became um, either religious or state buildings but actually our, the wing that we live we work in um, the east wing has bef up to the 1950s was flats on the ground floor and in the 80s social housing was built in the enclosure of the workhouse there's also sheltered house so that you can just see the the social housing peeking behind us there's also um sheltered housing for older people the fire station the small little block of of county council offices and then camp hill have a beautiful garden so it's already this kind of civic cluster and this reimagination of what what um yeah what the site could be in the 21st century patrick had very um ambitious ideas that half um that callan health center would come to the workhouse and that there would also be a rehab rehabilitation center on site and arts and heritage so that all came into crisis during in 2009 and some of the ideas for for its future weren't realized what's really interesting now is there's going to be housing on 
on the um, workhouse site, which had never been imagined. And we're, we're also going to be renovating this whole wing over the next two years. So it's kind of, it's shifted, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's been exciting. So I think, I mean, the, the idea of kind of commons and enclosures is very, is very linked on a kind of daily basis to our experience in the workhouse. Just to give you a sense of how we are inhabiting the workhouse, at the moment we've um, done some minor renovations to the ground floor. We have a library designed by Lid Architects, um, our kind of studio office, and then there's a research room and one permanent artist studio space. And outside there is a bike sh um, repair service run by a young man from Camp Hill. And we will, yes, yeah, so that it's at the moment we are probably running about four or five projects and for each project we have different um, kind of rolling artists and architects and designers coming to Callan and we have quite a nice space for for people to work in and stay and um, and then also the library provides will will be open to the public on a Wednesday so it's we kind of um, mostly using the the building for for our projects with a small kind of public offering at the moment. This is a photo from um, from Black Mountain College, and I think we're one of the things that our work is trying to promote or imagine is really how complex working in a rural site is, and also how radical. The rural can be and I think we're really interested in yeah just making sure that the complexity of a small rural town or a, a rural landscape is that, you, that we're making sure that we're showing that we're um, promoting that and, and, and developing projects that really that are exciting, that are cutting edge, and um, a lot of a lot of um, research into the urban Saskia Sass and the idea of cityness. Teddy Cruz, who's done phenomenal um, research into spatial justice in the on, on the border regions of Mexico and the U.S. I mean, thinkers like that who are able to bring up all of the complex negotiations that people living and working and developing cityscapes undergo. I think we, through kind of seven years of work on just a very small little town like Callan, you realise that there is that complexity, there's that level of kind of intense negotiation has to happen in any of those, those places. And um, so, yeah, Buck, Buckminster Fuller workshop in in Black Mountain College um, in the mountains of the US in the 40s, I think, at, you know, they, they were realising that, that, that the rural was a, was a space for innovation, I think. Um, and I hope, yeah, I think it, it's possible to, to, to really think of the rural as, as a very complex site. The, I think one of the um, ways that we describe how we've, how we've um, engaged with the workhouse is this idea of projects accumulating knowledge over since 2013. So we've done, we're called, sorry, I should have introduced myself properly, but the, org, um, the group that I work with is Callum Workhouse Union. And since 2013, we've had three projects Workhouse Assembly, Workhouse Union, and Workhouse Guild, which this year it's where, where um, our project's called Workhouse Guild. And they're all projects that we've commissioned artists and architects to work with um, our community of place and interests around the building, or wider. This year, this year the Workhouse Guild project's really looking at the county. Um, and each project has kind of accumulated meaning for how we will use the building in the future. 
and in 2013 Workers' Assembly was a project that looked at the material history of the building and also the mapping qualities of the building, so how, how the site has developed. And Gareth Kennedy, who's a visual artist, he looked at the material qualities of the line and did a wonderful project where participants, we had 30 participants who came from um, different disciplines, from archaeology, from conservation, from architecture, art, and also our local community. And they looked at the material properties of lime and um, we had a lime kiln on site and re-lime washed this one of the, the derelict spaces. And Gareth also made some the great oak stools. One of the other projects from Workhouse Assembly was called the Mapistry and Lid Architects undertook a mapping process of the of the workhouse site, so the kind of six hect um, six acre perimeter and through stitching, through embroidery, re um, mapped the original the original enclosure, the original buildings, but really focused on how the the site had changed through human and natural habitation. So there's this real sense that nature had massively taken over the site. And also people, there was actually quite an, a vibrant amount of people living in on the kind of um, the enclosure of the workhouse. And I think that's quite unusual in an Irish context that a lot of um, workhouses are either totally derelict or they're uh, an administrative building. So the sense that, and I think it's quite, it's quite, creates quite a lot of positivity around working also on the site that it people have this memory of the workhouse being a playground for the town and it it's it, it doesn't it's most more recent history isn't as dark as its its previous history and this was um, an image of the library but um, a an intervention the vagabond reviews did about as part of workhouse union workhouse union was really looking at the legacy of the workhouse as an institution and its contemporary relevance. So that was last year, and six artists um, undertook research projects into into the building and it and its legacy as an as an institution. That was a very, I mean, as a curator, it was one of the more, most difficult projects to have carried because the you suppose the, the weight and and the, we really yeah the reality of of what the building had been and, and its contemporary significance was pretty was pr pretty troubling and i think it's something that we could you know to, to really go into those layers one could only do every few years because it's you'd be exhausted <laughs> um but there's love really really rich um research kind of came out of of that process and then this year we're we're looking at our projects called workhouse guild and we're looking at the a relationship between contemporary art design and craft and Kilkenny having this incredible craft history um, and design history with the design Kilkenny design workshops which were set up by the Irish government in 1961 which invited European designers to Kilkenny to set up home and business and really reinvigorated um, a huge kind of craft tradition in 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 Ireland and I think I think it was one. I mean, that time Ireland had a design council, so it was kind of there was a, a very um, dedicated push um, to bring contemporary European design to Ireland. And we through through various projects that we've done in Callum, we really that mixture between um, bringing contemporary artists into contact with with makers has been really really important and we imagine that one of the futures of our building will be a space and a place for for um, quite large scale and complex um, projects to be developed on site um, bringing contemporary art craft and design into conversations so we wanted to explore that in a, in a quite soft way this year and we did an open call and we have artists from Canada the UK and Ireland 
working in the workhouse. Well, re it's a research residency, so we have four artists staying for two weeks and researching how their practice relates to craft. Um, and in conjunction, we have quite a big commission with an artist called um, Deirdre Mahoney, and she's working on a film piece. And just, I mean, one of the, the to give you an idea of some of the work that's happening, she's, her film piece is about the history of the potato and in connection with one of her, her stays, there was a um, local basket maker on residence. So they had this kind of making objects for the film. So I suppose we are, yeah, it's, um, we're hoping that Workhouse Guild and the, the work that's imagined through that will have a, have a stamp in how we design the, the future building. And moving from a building to a street, um, I'm going to talk briefly about Bridge Street and a project that happened. Well, it's again a long-term project. Where this summer we had the fourth year iteration of of work on Bridge Street. Bridge Street is um, a medieval street um, running in the centre of Callan. It was the main thoroughfare from kind of Kilkenny through to Cork, so huge amount of traffic used to zoom up and down it. It was very lively, lots and lots of small shops, um, lots of fantastic stories about cider trucks getting stopped and shopkeepers having pieces of wood that they could like manoeuvre trucks up and down it, amazing. Um, but since the bypass was built in the 1990s around um, the town, Bridge Street has gone into massive decline. Most of the shops closed, two pubs stayed open um, on Upper Bridge Street. And despite it having architectural significance and um, all of the shop facades have preservation orders, a lot of the, shop, a lot of the buildings got changed um, and there's some kind of Celtic tiger flats that never got finished on one of the upper um, sides. And from a, a kind of town planning perspective, the street was never really designed for cars and humans in the 21st century. And now that Callan has quite a big community of people with disability, with mobility issues, it's even kind of, it's exasperated that because people come to um, walk up Bridge Street to go to KCAT, which is an art school, and actually can't get up the street with their wheelchairs. Mothers and fathers can't push prams down. There's huge kind of um, issues, and also everybody parks everywhere on the street. So it's kind of, it's a bit of a lawless, but fantastic little street. And it's also home to Fenley's, which is the blue building on the um, left-hand corner, which is um, an old pub, an old undertaker's, this fantastically multifaceted building where you have the shop, the um, entrance into the pub, the entrance into the, into the home and the entrance into the yard. So these three, three kind of entranceways into the house um, or into the building. And curator Aton Houlihan, who has been very involved in the work as well, she's reimagining that as a, as a space for the community and also for business. And again, reimagining this kind of um, commercial, private, and public, um, yeah, future for for the building. So she's been a real instigator of of reimagining Bridge Street, and um, one of the the kind of there's been four years of of various um, levels of of research and projects happening on the street. The most awe-inspiring or exciting was the Brid um, Bridge Street Will Be, which was a, um, an architecture and theatre collaboration. And interestingly, it really what it was a very um, interesting notion where Studio Weave, who are architects from the UK, very playful, very um, imaginative, were given the task to. Um, to respond to a piece of theatre that was being devised. So it wasn't a case that the architects were creating set designs for a theatre work, but it was this, this really interesting um, conversation between the two. And the, 
The outcome was a theatre piece that happened in all of the buildings on Bridge Street. Most buildings were opened up and 80 um, people from the local community took part and it told the past, future and fa past, present and future of the street from, um, and it was an, an amazing, amazing experience. This year, um, Studio Weave have continued to, to work with the local community and have, and especially with Aton and Fenleys and thinking about how the courtyard of Fenleys could become this armature, this kind of, this public space for the street because it is so narrow, because there, it is a thoroughfare that um, the possibility for the street to, to open out into um, the courtyard of Fenleys and so that this year the project was called Courtyard Screen and a outdoor cinema was um, designed by Studio Weave and built by about a hundred people. I think a hundred people in the local community took part in workshops um, through wood, well it was um, wood turning, wood carving and then sail making and it was a two week workshop where, yeah, so there was the wood carving and then this fantastic sail and this cinema, little cinema space. And um, I think on a studio we've have and their work on Bridge Street, I think one of the really nice things is that people in the town, because so many people, I mean, when the, um, oh, sure, actually I'll just go back a second, the studio we've paint, repainted the entire street and mirrored one side onto the other, it's called reflected elevation, and the entire street has been repainted to, um, I don't actually have a good image, but basically one side reflected onto the other, so all of the window shapes. And it's very, very beautiful, it's very subtle. Um, and that was, that was painted over a month, I think again, by over about 60, 60 people in the town. And because it was a similar time when these um, kind of tidy towns or paint your street up projects were happening across our, people didn't really know that this was a big art project. And I think that's one of the strengths of it was, and again, even with the, um, with the cinema um, that people, so many yeah, people just were dropping in over a few weeks and the gen, like the, we had run summer schools 2010, 11 and 12 um, through a project called Commonage in Callan, which were really the amazing beginning of all of this work. And the summer schools used to always have invited people come to the town to do something and, and what's really been wonderful over the last few years is these projects now are not so much invited people but people from the town taking part and I think that's been a huge shift also in ownership and in um, yeah, just people's relationship that, that I think if outside visitors had painted Bridge Street there would have been a, a, a very different reaction. Um, and most, yeah, I mean, most people, the, the, the buildings are all still painted and they're kind of sometimes cleaned up and we haven't quite gone through the negotiation whether people will paint their houses back or will keep it, but it's, it's, um, it's very a dramatic change. So that's just um, the cinema, a youth film at night in the cinema. And the, the Courtyard Screen was funded through the Engaging with Architecture Award and we had a programme of films that related to, to architecture and, and sort of spatial justice. So over our festival, which the Owen Ree Festival, it's a, a festival in June that really brings all of this together. Um, we had a programme of films that really, yeah, from across the world that looked at, at ideas of of architecture and community and spatial justice. Um, 
And that was, that was really exciting. And also there was um, a nice youth film programme as well. So was, um, I'm just going to quickly jump on to um, kind of the last, the last section, which is town. And I'm not, I'm not at all as, um, <laughs> as eloquent as, as Orla in terms of her research into town, but we've, for the last three years, have been working with Kilkenny County Council on more of a county-wide um, county idea, and they've been really interested in us transferring some of the research and work that's happened in Callan to other communities in, in Kilkenny, and um, we've worked with some of the bigger towns and this summer actually with some of the smaller villages and, and Orla, was, invol Orla um, was involved working with a small community about 10 kilometres outside Callan Cull Wine Gap and that was, that's been really exciting um, and very, very different um, working with, yeah, with, with the smaller villages. And... So the, yeah, the inhabitants program, we made sure that there were these these smaller projects happening in the in in the rural towns in the hinterland, and just to give you an idea, so our work in our work um, in the towns of Kilkenny, 2013, a project called Forecast, which was looking at the future of the of a rural town. Inhabitants, which was really looking at how do you, how do we, how do we engage with our, um, with our, with our town, with our public spaces, with our um, civic infrastructure, and this year we are starting a project this month called Meet You at the Green question mark, um, and it's. I suppose our, our much bigger manifestation of all of, of the town's projects and um, we'll be working with Todo Porla Praxis who are architects from Spain and they did a fantastic workshop with us in February working with 80 students in the local schools and building a mobile outdoor youth space which is this bubble inflated bubble structure and they are going to be working across a number of towns looking at Po um, pocket outdoor play spaces for teenagers and Meet You at the Green is um, an intergenerational project so we're looking at how do people come together in their town but from kind of old you know old people through to young people and I think that's I mean somewhere like Callan that's always this kind of I suppose it's in every city it's the same but this crisis between how teenagers inhabit public space and how older people you kind of have this constant um, different different ages not using spaces because the other person the other the other age group is is um, yeah maybe taking advantage I mean one thing in Callan I'm sure it's in most playgrounds is, is a playground for children but it's mostly used by teenagers and parents don't bring their kids to the playground so um, Kilkenny is an incredible Hurley County. And I think that the sports facilities in a county like Kilkenny are extraordinary. Um, and the GAA provides a huge amount of activity and infrastructure for young people. Um, but through the, through the youth design workshop that we did in the school, well, that Totoporla Praxis did in the schools, there was a definite um, understanding that uh, you know, people who don't fit, fit into, into the GAA or don't see that they're amenities there are quite can be quite isolated and so um, yeah meet you at the green will be happening over the next 18 months we're also working with Reena Neal who's a choreographer and Michelle Brown who's a visual artist and Ed Devan who's a sound artist so that's going to be um, um, in Kilkenny and also Carlo and again working with visual a little bit so yeah um maybe yeah i kind of got off housing but maybe <laughs> i kind of wanted to give an idea of sort of our broader work and we could maybe with questions if people have ideas back to co-housing or nimble spaces 
I'd be delighted to answer them.